I have here two original vintage Vox Jaguar organs from the late 60s, which my brother and I have owned since the late 80s. The first one here with the top off we used extensively for live concerts 30 years ago. And the second one we kept for studio use with original legs and it's in pretty much pristine condition. First one here is a little rough and I've had to do some repairs to get it back in working condition. But they're both running perfectly and I wanted to go over the recent repairs I did to fix them all up so that I can help some of you who might be having the same issues. The Vox Jaguar is the little brother to the more famous Vox Continental. It has fewer sounds, but it still sounds fantastic. My brother more recently purchased a Nord keyboard that has a Vox Jaguar sound, but nothing like the original. In the corner here is the original power supply. This aluminum box here. Takes the 120 volts AC coming in, runs it through this transformer, rectifies it using the uh, single diode here, rectifying diode, and the capacitor. The original capacitor was an axial dual 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. I replaced that with these two individual capacitors. One is axial and I put the other one as radial just to uh, help fit in that space. I also put an inrush current limiter right here, which helps prevent the, uh, any damaged electronics from the inrush of electrons when you first turn the unit on. And I had to replace this cord because the original cord was lost. These vintage box cords are very rare, and I happen to have one right here so you can take a look at it. The Vox Jaguars were made in Italy, and this is possibly some type of Italian design here, but you can't find these anywhere. Got this one here. Getting back to this board, the Vox Jaguar uses these individual tone generating circuits for each one of the notes. And in the corner here you'll see what is called the bass, low C, and vibrato board. Starting in the corner back here, You've got this little trimmer resistor. It's a 5K trimmer. I replaced this one. I replaced all the electrolytics for both Jaguars, including these five microfarad electrolytics with 4.7 microfarad radials. The original ones were axial. This here is a 50 microfarad. I replaced that. And there's another 50 microfarad back right there. You don't need to replace these paper capacitors at all. They're right on spec and they hold well and you don't have to replace the uh, ceramic capacitors either. These units have these germanium transistors. This is a 116 and this is the 351. They're sometimes noted to go bad. None of mine are bad. I did notice however that a lot of the resistors are way out of spec. Some of the 4.7's are all the way up to 7K and I replaced many of those. Going to these individual tone generating boards the Vox Jaguar generates a very high frequency, each one of these boards, and then it divides the frequency down by octaves to give you the variable harmonics that make it sound so rich. The actual frequency of each board is determined by these individual paper capacitors right here. And you'll notice as you go to the right, they get smaller. That's what determines the actual sound, the frequency. I have replaced some of these resistors and some of these units. This one in particular I'll talk about in a second. One of my boards didn't generate the low bass. I was able to fix that without any, having any replacement 351s. They're hard to come by. So I just replaced the position of one. I moved one from here down to there and put that one there and worked fine. Sometimes you can take something that doesn't conduct and push on these boards and just see if there's an intermittent connection and you can touch up some electronic solders. In this particular unit, my brother used to use it to surf on and light on fire back in the 80s. A little lighter fluid, you can't tell, but it did damage this one circuit board. It cracked it in half, so I had to use jumpers to connect it. And it damaged this variable capacitor here, which is how you fine-tune the pitch. I fixed this by just using some individual little tiny capacitors here and dialing in the proper pitch there and then just using what I had 
to finally adjust it to perfection right there. There is another electrolytic capacitor underneath this control panel. It's a thousand microfarad, originally rated at 15 volts. I replaced this one with a 35 volt axial 1000 microfarad. I also fixed the light bulb on this, it wasn't working. These units run on 15 volts. That's what comes out of the power supply. And you can measure that 15 volts if you contact the first contact here and the last. This is ground and this is 15. So you only need a 16 volt light for this. These toggles also frequently break, the pins underneath them, and I had to replace some of those. I'll go over that in a little bit. The keys are notorious for having the plastic covers get loose. I find that the uh, hot glue gun is the best thing to attach those, particularly the white caps, which I have never been able to find a replacement for, and this one here, which was kind of fragmented, I just used a glue gun, and that one's nice and solid now. The springs for all these units are behind the keys right there. The very first one didn't work very well, so I just added the second spring to it right there. Works fine. I'll go under this unit here. Back in the 80s, we used Velcro to hold this down because I was frequently repairing it. The contacts for the keys are right here. And they fit in this little channel. When you push the key down, it touches that lower bar. If it doesn't do that, you can squeeze this little clay they have on these and adjust it to have it right in the perfect position. I also use twist ties along the bundles here to make this a little neater. And I'm going to turn this unit on so you can hear it. While I do that, I'll let you check out this other Jaguar here. It has one little variation that's kind of interesting. One of the tone generator boards is different than the others. I've never seen it on any other unit. It's this one right here. So maybe that was original. Maybe it's been, it was repaired in the, in the 60s or 70s. But the other ones look like the standard one, but this D-sharp one is a little different. Works perfectly. Sounds great. I like running these units through a um, tube guitar amp. I think they sound best that way, and I've added a little reverb to this one. These white keys are for bass, and there's actually a separate bass output over there if you want to run it to its own amp. However, If you turn on this little key here, which says bass chords, what you do is you thereby extensively extend the keyboard. As you can see, nothing sounds like a box Jaguar. Let me go over the parts you'll need if you want to do the repair. Let me turn the amp down here. One thousand microfarad, originally twenty-five volt dual axial capacitor for the power supply. I just used a two individual uh, one thousand microfarad capacitors rated at fifty volts. Underneath the control panel, there's another one thousand microfarad. It was originally rated at fifteen volts axial. I just replaced it with a one thousand microfarad thirty-five. Fits perfectly. You'll need two fifty microfarad twenty-five volt capacitors axial, and four, not three, four. 4.7 microfarad caps to replace the five original ones. As far as the resistors are concerned, if you do need to replace any, what's unique is these 82 ohm resistors. There's about four of those per board. Then there's a 1 1.2, 1 1.5, 3.3. There's several of those. 4.7s. These ones I frequently found the most out of spec, running up to 7 kilo ohms on some of them. You'll find one 10K, 33K, 330 ohm, 47K, lots and lots of 100K, 56K, 2.7, another one that was frequently out of spec, 22, 15, and 18. These are all half watt resistors. I also had to re-glue the corners because these old boards kind of break apart as time goes on. 
And I hope that's helped anybody else. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. I don't find any need to upgrade the power supply. The original ones were great and they lasted 50 years. No need to fix that. Take care.